Hello, you are watching the Video Voters Guide, organized by the League of Women Voters of Portland. We are in the studios of Metro East Community Media to talk with candidates running in the November 2020 general election. All candidates who filed for this race were invited to participate in the Video Voters Guide. However, there are many reasons during a campaign why a candidate may be unable to appear. For comprehensive coverage by the League, including information on candidates who might not have been available for a video interview, visit vote411.org. Information is available in both English and Spanish. Candidates may choose to include additional information on Vote 411, such as their own YouTube videos. Watch, share, and be an informed voter. Hello, this is Colleen Shoemaker with the League of Women Voters of Portland. And with me today is Jerry Hinton, running for Gresham City Council Position 1. Welcome, Jerry. Thank you. Great to be here. Good. So please tell us a little about yourself and why you're running for this office and what unique characteristics you have among all the <laughs> candidates for this office. Great. Um, it's, again, great to be here. I appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to uh, chat with the, the league. Um, Again, my name is Jerry Hinton. This is, uh, I'm running for my third term uh, of uh, Gresham City Council position one. Uh, I am a father, uh, a husband, a grandfather. Um, I am a man of faith. I've even served uh, uh, two years in the Andes Mountains uh, when I was a young man with the Aymata Indians, serving them uh, for a full two years. Um, I uh, am a I just retired as a automotive executive for 34 years. I was president of the NAAA, which is our the national association that that oversees uh, my industry. Um, I therefore, because of that, and because of uh, uh, my connection with uh, business for so long, and with the national association, and with the city, I have been very familiar with budgets, multi-million dollar budgets, and even billion dollar budgets. Um, I fully believe that uh, serving uh, is, is the rent we pay to live on this earth. And so that is what I was ingrained upon by my parents when I was young and by my faith. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in finance, an MBA, and a law degree, which has uh, served me well, not only in business, but also in, in the city. What would be your top three priorities as council member this term? Well, that's, that's hard because you've got uh, lots of different things. But if I, can, if I had to compartmentalize them into three things, one would be public safety. I believe it's uh, uh, any government's responsibility primarily uh, to keep their citizens safe. And with uh, public safety, um, I support our first responders. I reject the notion of, of defunding. Uh, I do recognize that there are a lot of mental illness uh, issues that our officers are sent out to. And I do believe that some funding could be uh, uh, moved into uh, that kind of category where we're bringing out some first responders that are relative to, to mental health. It certainly is uh, an issue with our homeless population where, where they are, uh, again, uh, almost 70 to 80 percent uh, uh, mental, uh, have mental uh, issues, and then almost 100 uh, percent drugs and alcohol addictions. You put those two together, it, it keeps for a very interesting and dynamic uh, uh, issue relative to our first responders. Um, I believe in the rule of, of, the, of uh, the rule of law, and I believe that uh, we need to be held accountable for our, our actions. Uh, number two would be economic development. Um, Again, these are things that you hear candidates talk about all the time, but being a, a, a business leader for 34 years, um, I do believe that uh, economic development is the epicenter of, of uh, our quality of life in our community. Um, we need to support our small businesses. Uh, we need to support our, our, all of our businesses and down to tourism. And uh, we are uh, one of the uh, entryways into the, to the gorge and Mount Hood area, and uh, we need to uh, capitalize on that. Um, I believe we have responsibility to incentivize uh, our small business, particularly because of COVID right now with the issues that are going on. We need to do all we can and, and put our garage to storefront uh, 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 programs on steroids in terms of really helping to incentivize small businesses, uh, continue on with enterprise zones, and uh, uh, provide uh, less government red tape where, where, wherever possible. 
We need to let businesses do what they do best and get out of their way. Uh, third would be housing. We, uh, Gresham is uh, already considered one of the most affordable places in the region. Um, our, our property tax uh, legislative issues uh, go way deep, and we unfortunately are at a point where the, it barely covers the uh, general fund, and so we're having to look at ways to to uh, augment that. And it needs we need somebody in my seat that uh, understands budgets and can work on both sides of the aisle relative to that. Now, again, uh, city politics is nonpartisan. However, uh, uh, party dynamics have, have definitely entered in, uh, especially this year with all the different things that are happening. Uh, but I do have a great relationship with with both sides and also with all the regional leaders uh, because I, I sit on uh, four uh, committees that are connected with uh, the region, with all the other mayors, uh, Metro, and the, the, the uh, county. Uh, I, I, I do want to increase our urban growth boundary and put a petition there in to increase our designation so that we can uh, grow with our density to the south and east of us, uh, also do some some elements of annexation into the, the northern part of Damascus from our southern borders. Um, that brings in more tax base and it helps uh, us to have a greater economy of scale to offer more services to our citizens. Well, Jerry, the, uh, that COVID-19 pandemic and resulting devastation of small businesses and city employee layoffs and housing displacement is gonna be with us for some time. And you've addressed some of the aspects of how you would deal with that. Can you talk uh, a little bit about how you would seek to address the fallout, including the reduction in city revenues? Right, because of COVID, and we were, we were coming into the city budget with a couple million dollars shortfall because of, uh, again, the uh, property tax, uh, um, misalignment relative to the legislature. Uh, so we were already looking at a couple million dollars upside down, but because of COVID, we're going to be looking at more like $13 million for the 2021 budget season. Uh, the CARES Act, fortunately, is going to be providing uh, about three and a half million this year, one time. Uh, and, and there's no promise that we'll get anything next year, but there is a possibility that uh, the, the national government will be providing a, a phase two of some CARES uh, funding for next year, but we have to be very careful with that. We recognize that that is one time. Um, we are going to have to uh, uh, put in place uh, in order to maintain our basic functions here, our fixed costs. Uh, again, we are one of the lowest uh, per capita officers and fire engines in the, in the, uh, in the state, especially relative to the size city that we are. So uh, we can't really go any lower. Our, our budget is very tight. Our, we compared it to to uh, uh, Hillsborough almost in, in population size, and yet they, for the general fund, represent about $74 million, and we're about $33 million. And uh, we're going to have to uh, uh, go out to the citizens and, 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 and hopefully pass a levy as soon as possible, probably in May. That will go on the ballot. But again, that takes time to get those things in place. We'll probably have to short uh, 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 fall it with an uh, uh, increase in our, in our service fee. Um, that will get it uh, get us to the point where we can sunset it and go into the levy. Okay, well, I, we have just about one minute left. So, um, would you? How would you address the public's significant concerns about police community relations, um, the use of deadly force, and officer accountability? And I think this will be our last question. I, I'm very grateful for the the issue to have come up. Uh, it's it's once in a lifetime, actually, uh, in terms of the timing that that. Uh, we can address these kinds of things with the engagement that the whole world really uh, is involved with right now. Um, while it's uh, unfortunate how we got here, uh, we need to take advantage of that. I, 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 I fully believe that we should support and, and provide solidarity to our, 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 our brothers and sisters of, of all colors and, and, and do all we can to uh, cut out the systemic racism that's embedded with almost everything that we do. Um, uh, however, I do support our, our, our first responders and, and believe that uh, Gresham does not fall within those statistics, and it has been proven within the state of Oregon that uh, those statistics in terms of stops and profiling, uh, we, are, we are in good, good shape there. Um, while uh, there are always uh, 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 exceptions to that rule, um, and while there definitely needs to be some uh, potential reform and, and training 
uh, we are in a good spot and we need to take that and continue to uh, uh, provide uh, con- uh, community engagement uh, to our citizens so they understand we can we can get together on that we have over 70 languages spoken in Gresham very very the most diverse city in in the uh, in the in the uh, region and uh, we need to embrace that and, and make that uh, part of our uh, uh, part of our, our, our culture here and 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 our police department and our first responders they're part of that but we do need to uh, look at some reform and make sure that they're uh, in 21st century policing Thank you. It looks like we have about 20 seconds left. So last question, if you'd like, um, how would you strengthen Gresham's working relationship with surrounding jurisdictions on issues such as transportation, policing, social services? Well, as I mentioned, I already sit on all of those committees. I, uh, the Region 1 Act for Transportation and ODOT with the IMPAC, which is the, uh, the Metro Policy Advisory Committee uh, with the Muktuk East County. Uh, all of those committees relative to the region where, where the mayors get together and the uh, leaders of ca- county and the, and the uh, me- metro get together, I'm already on those committees and have been for almost the last six or seven years. And so I know them all. I'm endorsed by almost all of them uh, regionally and all of those mayors. And we already have a great working relationship so that we can uh, make sure that we work together. Again, a lot of Democrats uh, a few Republicans, but regardless, we're all there together and, and it's nonpartisan and we need to work that, uh, that route for future growth of our region. Well, thank you very much, Jerry, for joining us today. Great. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. This has been the Video Voters Guide. Thank you for watching. The general election is Tuesday, November 3rd. The last day to register is October 13th. Remember to mail your ballot a week ahead or visit a ballot drop location. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and ballot measures and exercise your right to vote.